on, this is the day that the Lord has made, and I choose to rejoice. So I got some folks in here, you're glad about it this morning? Has God been good to you? Come on, let me hear you stand. Make some noise in this place. Come on, as you stand to your feet. Come on, tell somebody, say, I'm so glad he gave me one more day to bless his name. Are you glad to be alive? Come on. So that everything that had breath, praise the Lord. Come on, clap your hands like this this morning. Come on.
to just make some noise in here. Come on. Now the saints make some noise. Clap your hands. Come on. Today, those who are in the sanctuary and those who are viewing live stream, it's just a good day to tell the Lord, thank you for allowing us to experience his brand new mercies. Amen. With heads bowed and eyes closed. God, we love you. We honor you. We thank you, God, for one more day. We thank you for one more opportunity for us to praise you, for us to demonstrate who you are in our lives. Thank you, Lord. We pray, God, that this worship will be a, a blessing to each other, oh God, and then pleasing unto you. 
In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. today can be found in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. Again, that's Luke, the 10th chapter, verses 38 through 42. When you have it, please say praise the Lord. And I'll be reading from the New International Version of the Bible. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. This concludes our reading. This is the word of God, and I do believe that it is true. The grass withers and the flowers may fade away, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. Amen. Why don't you remain standing as we do our hymn of worship this morning. Oh, how I love Jesus. Come on, there is a name I love to hear. I love to sing his worth. It sounds like music in my ear. Yeah, your name is a love song. Yes. It's like a sweet melody in my ears. Come on, tell somebody, say, oh, how I love oh, Jesus. Oh, how I love you. Yes, Jesus. <laughs> Let me hear you sing, oh, how, oh. 
That's just a powerful hymn of the church. Amen. It's just a comfort to know that God loves us with a love that will never let us go. Ooh, don't you? Ain't you just glad that you, we serve a God who loves us despite of us? Even though we try to cross all of the T's and dot all of the I's, we, we mess up more times than we get it right. But God still loves us. Praise the Lord. And we are so blessed to have that down on the inside of us. Because when stuff happens in our lives, we can resonate in the love of God. And that can help us to be strengthened and navigate through whatever it is that we may be experiencing. Amen. We're excited on this Sunday where we will celebrate those who have completed new members orientation and the Gen Next confirmation. So Deacon Kern McMary, Deacon Anthony Clark, our Christian Education Director, and Deacon Kern uh, Davidson. Davidson. Kim Davidson, forgive me. A lot of Kerns around here. <laughs> All right, come on. Let's... All right. Amen, family. Uh, as he said, we are standing as part of the Christian Education Department. And uh, also, we're standing in the absence of Reverend Preston uh, Williams. Good Lord. We're bad this morning. I know. Uh, but we are recognizing three adults who have completed the members' orientation, as well as three young people who have completed confirmation classes, amen? So this is how all of you can help us out this morning. We want, as we call each name and they come forward, we want you to celebrate with us um, because this is their entree into ministry. Now that they've completed these processes, they can now uh, serve here in the body of Christ, amen? Amen. So we're gonna start with the three adults and, um, Okay, so our first is Ethan Jeffries. If you are present, will you please come forward, Ethan? <laughs> Amen. Just a second, Ethan. Ethan, would you mind standing right over here? Thank you. All right. Next, we have Lee Vella Mayo. If you are present, will you please come forward? Come on, let's show her some love as she comes forward. and final adult that we are recognizing who has completed new members orientation is Tyrika Harris. Tyrika, if you can come forward. And now to recognize our three young people who have completed youth confirmation, we first recognize Kai Robinson. Will you please come forward?
Next we have Zion Roberson. Will Zion please come forward? And our last confirmation graduate is Ms. Shayla Coleman, who read, and she was our reader for this morning. Already serving, praise God. Can let's we just show some a lot of love for our six candidates that we Amen, Amen. Last thing for our candidates in room 301, which is the room in that corner, please meet us after service. We want to take a group photo and have a brief reception with you. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Great job. Great job. <laughs> we celebrate with those who have united and completed orientation as well as the confirmation classes. And most of those have been uh, on live stream. And so they took an extra bit of sacrifice to do that. So to the parents of those young people, thank you so much for doing that. All right, we are moving toward our, our prayer period. In fact, we have a baby blessing today, a big family that's here, the Mason family and others. Yeah, but before we get to them, before we get to them, before we get to them, we want to we wanna lift uh, some of these prayer concerns, and then Minister Tracy Stone Neal is going to help us assemble. But I want to lift uh, some of these prayer concerns before you, the families have been calling in and letting us know uh, of their illnesses and bereavements, and so we... We like to share that in worship as well as continue our intercessory prayer uh, that has been going on through all of the pandemic, even up until this day. Every week, our prayer team is gathering to intercede on behalf of all of the prayer concerns that have been lifted. On today, we do have a couple of praise reports. Linda uh, McGoy is recovering from a successful surgery. Praise the Lord. She called the day she's ready to have the surgery. Say, please pray for me. I got surgery today. And we made contact afterwards. Surgery went well, and she's recovering. So we're grateful for that. Lorenzo Winston was hospitalized on last week, and he has been released and is doing much better at home. Amen. You know what God does for one, he will do for the other. For bereavements, Dwan Lee Sr. and Dwan. Uh, Junior funeralized their cousin, Tawana Payne. Nicole Anderson funeralized her father, Charles Jordan. Christine Walker funeralized her uncle, Willie Walker. Then we're praying with Rhonda Simmons in the passing of her, her mother, Lillian Wilson. Lillian Wilson is also the aunt of uh, Valetta, uh, Valetta, Vanetta McAllister. She's in worship today with us on as well. So we're praying for you and the entire family, Yvonne as well. Lorraine Alexander finalized uh, her cousins, Jaquela Howard and Janae Howard of Chula, Mississippi. We're praying with Evelyn Campbell and family in the passing of her sister and of course our Shalom Church family member, Yvonne Campbell. We're praying for that entire family and all of those who have traveled to Jamaica, and now they're back in the States, and we're grateful that they are back on homeland. Amen. And are able to receive the needed medical attention that was not able to be provided where she 
where they were, but they now are here, and we're grateful for that. We're lifting that family up. Minister Nadine Davis, Nicole Bostic, Angela Jordan, and Joe Cooper in the passing of their cousin, Gloria Young. That service will be tomorrow at Austin Lane's Renaissance Chapel. We're praying uh, for them. As always, we're praying with our pastor, the Reverend Dr. F. James Clark, his wife, Sister Cheryl Clark, and the entire Shalom Church family. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, I'm praying for you today. Amen. Tell your other neighbor on the other side, neighbor, I'm praying for you today. The effectual fervent prayers of the righteous avail as much. Amen. Now we want to pray with the Mason family. So won't you start, come, start making your way. Gregory and Alessix. Mason. Come on, family. Come on, those who would like to come and stand down front. You're welcome to do that. Keep your mask on. There we go. There we go. Yeah, he's standing right here. He's get on the other side. Come on the other side of me, Gregory. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, y'all can let me know yellow was the color today. <laughs> That's all right. We are so grateful for Alessix and Gregory and asking the church to partner with them in prayer for their precious gift. Yeah, Zara, Elise. Elise. Yeah, I ain't messed it up yet. All right, I'm doing good. Yeah, while, while we're gathering, we certainly not only pray for this family, but we pray for all of the families and parents and guardians who have responsibility over their, over their children. As Dr. Clark always says, and I love to repeat it, that when the family is strong, the church can be strong. And when the family and the church are strong, our community can be strong. So we're grateful for this large community that are here today and those of you who are in we're in the sanctuary. I want to share just a little quick brief story uh, in the delivery process. They had some midwives. It was a home pregnancy, home birth at home, and the midwife was late. But old Daddy Gregory's jumped on in and delivered this baby. <laughs> uh, so we're, God is good. God is good. Yeah, yeah, God is good. He know how to make a way out of no way. Won't you stand with us? Our choir is going to give a little something to get our hearts ready, and we'll go to God together in prayer. every head bowed and every eye closed. Dear God, our Father, Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we are so grateful and humbled by this privilege you've given us to gather one more time. We thank you, God, for waking us up last night, waking us up this morning, and giving us your health and strength. We thank you, God, for allowing us to make it one more time into the house of worship where we can share with one another, where we can intercede on behalf of each other. So we thank you for these parents, Gregory and Alessix. We thank you for their precious baby, Zora, God, 
We know that every good and precious gift come from you. And so we simply pray that you will cover that child with your covering, keeping her from dangers seen and dangers unseen. Then we pray that you will give these parents what they need to nurture her in the way that she shall go. We pray, oh God, that you will empower them with your wisdom and your insight. Oh God, and we know, oh Lord, that you are able to give them what they need. Father, not just for them and for their child, but for every parent, for every guardian, oh God. We pray that you will continue to bless us and strengthen us and keep us. There's so much happening in our world, God, but you are able to be a very present help in our times of need. And so we depend on you, oh Lord, to give us what we need. We thank you for this village that have gathered around Zora today, oh God. We thank you for how you are blessing them and strengthening them that they can be a source of encouragement in the days, weeks, months, and years to come, oh God. Lord, you know what we stand in need of even before we ask. And so we simply pray that you would have your way and have mercy, oh God, in the name of Jesus. For every other prayer concern that's in this room, we may not know all of them, but you know because you are omniscient. So we simply pray, oh God, that you would meet each and every one in the point of our need. For the rest of this service, we pray for the word of God on today that it will go forward with power and conviction. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray this prayer. Amen and amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen. Just a little prayer and pray goes on my people
one look, one look at Jesus, and my kids will all pass away. Only one look was all I needed, and now my life would be forever changed. Then I saw. I saw him and he blessed my soul and he blessed my soul and he blessed my soul without a word Bless my soul, and he bless my soul without the word. He is a son. Yes, he did. Jesus did he and she did. Without Jesus did he and she did.
Yes, 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 my Jesus. Without one word And he, he blessed my soul And he blessed my soul And he blessed my soul time for those who are streaming we're grateful for grateful for your presence as well I want to invite you to the book of James 
chapter 1, uh, verses 2 to 4. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Amen. This is the word of God. I believe it's true. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Yeah, you may be seated. God's blessings upon you in this great time in which we in which we live and the uh, overall calling that we have on our lives for such time as this and how we are all summons to find our pace in this march toward uh, justice as well as honoring God. Uh, he blessed my soul without a word. Didn't stop there. Didn't stop there. Didn't stop there. Gave us plenty of word. Uh, uh, because there were times he already knew where we would measure his not being there as being absent. Therefore, he gave us a word. And so we have, we have the presence of his word that would guide us in times such as, such as this. There was a period where God went silent. And all of us have experienced at some point what appeared to be the silence of God uh, as if he were not there. Uh, but God's presence can never be denied even when we think God not to be present. One of the many times that I can remember when Cheryl was mad at me about something, and uh, she was in the house, but she just wasn't talking. Yeah. But she was present. Sometimes it looks like in our, in our immediate context yes, yeah. that God, because we don't hear from him, that he is not present. But he's in the room and it's left up to us to try to give interpretation to his uh, being in the room but silent. Much of that has to do with what we find in his word on today in these verses in James. James, a major figure in the early church in Jerusalem uh, who writes to the 12 tribes scattered among the nation. And this is a letter that has precious wisdom sayings. One of the positions theologically is in this letter is to move toward Christian maturity. That James James is aware that 
experiences of suffering can provoke crises of faith. Uh, that there are those who claim to have great faith when everything lines up for them. And then they live before us as people who have no faith when things are contrary. And so James wants to try to pull together this arena of uh, faith and works, works and faith. That faith without works is dead. And works without faith cannot be supported. And so he says, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete. Lacking nothing, one translation says. Lacking nothing. Harold Krishna, uh, some of you may know, he wrote that, that New York Times bestseller, When Bad Things Happen to Good People. And that was written some time ago, and, and yet the truth of the title rings forever so clear today. Because bad things happen to good people. There are some people who bought into some theological uh, um, building blocks or they thought it was theological faith building blocks where the message had everything to do with once in Christ troubles over <clears throat> or somehow God would shield us from bad things happening and, and I admit that has been my prayer also for people whom I love deeply that God would protect them, that he would uh, build around them yeah. gates of security. Yeah. And those who are within the confines of the gates that God has of my prayer has been, and I'm sure yours, that God would keep not only those people who are precious to us, but the people who are with the people who are precious to us. I don't just bless my children, but bless my neighbors. That's been, that's been the hope. And so it's hard, it's hard to reconcile sometimes when you know good people that bad things happen to. It shakes our faith. It causes us to wonder where God was. Some people, because incidents provoke crises of faith, they walk away from the whole concept of the process or the development of faith building. Because we literally hold God uh, for our human safety. Yeah, yeah. And when there is a violation of our human safety, even after we have prayed for it, then God being all powerful, yeah. as we say, could have prevented it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and we say of this great tragedy preventer, 
learn about him that if you had been present, this would not have happened. And you know we take offense when we hear that he sometimes provokes it. And that he leaves a way, a door, an avenue open for trials and tribulations. We take, we, we, we take, we take issue with a God that would allow something to happen and we 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 hold him accountable because we are people who attend service and we and we are we are we are in ministry we 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 have sacrificed so much for this god we have we have given up personal pleasures And here we yet find ourselves. And when we talk about it, him being a just God that allow it to reign on the just as the way of the unjust, uh, that's, that's one thing. That's rain. That's rain. We're not, we're not talking about human suffering. And I said I would follow you to keep, keep me free of human suffering. And we get to James. And this is what James has to say. He says when you find yourself there, he says count it all joy. knowing that the trying of your faith produces perseverance. And so let it let let it have let it let it have let it have its perfect work. Have you ever found yourself uh, in private when things don't go your way, shaking your fist at God? Um, I'll, I'll dare you let something like this happen to me. And I know you know that moved God, didn't you? That made him, that made God change God's mind. Count it, count it all joy, he says. When, you, when you're confronted with various trials, listen, various trials, various trials. Uh, meaning it could be almost anything. So, 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 so one of the, one of the lanes that I hope to carve in your hearing today is that the problem may not be your being so bad. The problem may be our attempting to be so good. <laughs> that the, the, the attempt to be so good moves us into intellectual space where we think that certain things can't happen to us be, be, because we, we are monitoring and measuring our behavior. Um, and then we get to James who, who says to when you find yourself in those spaces, in those places where uh, the, uh, the, the count it joy and, and so it becomes even harder for us to reconcile 
suffering through the instrument of joy. It's hard for us to find people who are, are in the midst of personal storms, trials in life, and, and see how they could be so joyous about it. Well, and, and so that, that's not what James is talking about. Count it, count it all joy when, when you're in the state of being tested, uh, when hardships and difficulties have moved in with you and you discover that it's in all shapes and sizes. James is suggesting that we be intentional about choosing joy. Yeah. That there are people that are around us that will attempt to make us happy, but that's momentary because they have to be about their life. They've got to go on back to their, they've got to go on back to their life and wait for their trial. Because nobody is exempt. That, that all of us, all of us have and will continue to uh, experience some kind of hardship of difficulty that comes in many shapes and sizes. Uh, I like it when he says when you, when you, when you fall into, fall into, uh, you, you just, I said it at the first service, and I, I and I hope not to be as lengthy as I was in the in the first service. I, I, it's not my intention. It's really not my intention to bore anybody, but but the imagery the the imagery of falling. I have walked it, I, and I have to use myself uh, as an example because I won't offend me. I won't get in trouble talking about me. So I, I, have, I have been walking along and uh, not paying attention to how even the uh, concrete blocks are, uh, the pavement. And it, even if it was lifted a little bit, I managed to, to hit it and, and stumble. And, and if you're one of those persons that uh, detest fallen, you do all you can in your stumbling to, to attempt not to let the end result be a fall. Have you did that before? Have you? Yeah. 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 And so you, some of the moves, some of the moves, we didn't even know that we were that acrobatic. We, we just kind of, yeah. Because we know how embarrassing it is because we've fallen. We know how embarrassing it is to fall around people. Let's be clear, even when we have fallen around people and they pretend like they are concerned. See, you, 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 you are so naive as to think that they didn't see you fall and it has registered in into a laughter that they cannot portray yet. They, they are merely waiting on you to answer if you're okay. And if you say, I'm all right, then it's on, it's on, it's on. And if your memory serves you right, they start to tell you all of the many emotions that you had before you fell. And James says, when, when you stumble into it, uh, th this is, a, this is a, a strange response to 
What is to happen to both you and I when we stumble into trials and tribulation? He says to reverse your attitude. He says don't despise it. Don't, don't criticize it. He says count it all joy. It is, it, is almost, it is almost like the stumble has been prescribed by someone or something that we cannot see, but the stumble is going to work in our favor. And so choose joy got to choose joy that the enemy the enemy because you've stumbled and fallen into wants you to get bitter wants you to be beside yourself wants you, in wanting you to have what is called a personal pity party where you look at others and you wonder why not them why me but what you don't know that they've got their own opportunities to stumble. And it's not you or them, it's humanity. All of us will find ourselves in precarious situations, but James says when you do, count it joy. You know, uh, James is not saying in, enjoy the trials. Uh, He's not, he not saying enjoy the difficulties. Something, something ain't right. When people enjoy trials. I don't think I've ever met anybody that in that enjoys problems and difficulties that they may have. And, and if they told me that they did, I don't believe I stayed around them long. Uh, the James is saying, don't enjoy the trials, but enjoy to, to, to have this joy in knowing what the trial is going to bring, what is going to be the end result. What, what, what the, the final product of what you go through, the strength, the inner strength, because you have endured like a good soldier, uh, having weathered the storm. Now, I'm not talking to, to uh, uh, people who have remained steadfast only. But I'm also talking to those that when you see clouds gathering, it changes your mood and your disposition. And, and you have a woe is me kind of disposition about everything. Uh, but the joy of the Lord is our strength. Are you understand what I'm saying? That the joy, and, and so it's so important that when we find ourselves there uh, uh, and we choose joy. Yeah. Yeah. Let me just pause right here. I, I, in, in the first service, you know, uh, I, I've driven through other communities looking for a liquor store and I didn't find none. I was on prayer. I, I purposely went looking. They had they had some of these nice wineries where you know nobody is going to ever judge you for going into a nice winery. You know, it, it was a uh, uh, where the sin was kind of dressed up, <laughs> where you didn't you didn't feel you didn't feel guilty about going there. Get, in fact, if you saw somebody you knew, you spoke to them. As you read the label on the, but in the community, in the space that I live, almost on every corner and in between, there is a, a place that sells libations.
And sometimes we don't feel like going in there by ourselves. We don't feel like going in there, so we send somebody. Y'all live in this neighborhood? You all live around here? Do you know what I'm talking about? And so we gotta find we gotta we got we gotta we gotta find a way to not let uh, uh, alcoholic beverages be stronger than our faith. That that when that when people start to talk about alcohol, don't don't go don't no don't, don't judge me and don't go foreign on me like you don't know what I'm talking about. This ain't got nothing to do with the with the script. Of, a cognac drinkers, raise your hand. Right? Yeah, yeah. No, 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 don't. You, you, made, you made my point, and that's why these stores is open. Because the business is good in our neighborhood. The business is good, that's why they open. But the bigger point is, you can't find joy in that bottle. Ain't no joy in that bottle. No, no, no. Joy, the joy we need, it, 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 you, you can't get it off the shelf. No, it, it might make you temporarily happy, but it ain't gonna give you no lasting joy. And so James says, choose, choose joy. Make, make up your mind that you already know that even if I consume some of this, I'm not looking for it to do anything but wet my palate. But the real thing I need is to understand that only God can bring me out. Only God can bring me over it. Only God can bring me through it. Therefore, I choose to be happy. I choose my joy because the joy of the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. Yeah, I got enough sense to know ain't nothing I'm going to pull off the shelf. It's going to cure where I hurt. It's going to scratch where I itch. But if I learn to turn it over to the Lord, Lay it in his hands that he will work it out. Y'all gonna help, help me preach this. Y'all gonna find you somebody and just say, I tried him for myself. And I'm here to testify that he, he knows how to, how to work it out. He knows how to work it out. of my faith yeah, the trying of my faith yeah I, uh, <clears throat> so so uh, uh, just so 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 that we know that that the trials test faith yeah. this is not a test to see if you have any faith but to test the faith that you have. This is good for the saints. This is, this is good for the saints because there are some saints who believe that they are more than what they are. And, and they can, and they, they, give, they give all kind of patented answers when somebody else's trials is on display. They don't even have the sense that Job friends had to just sit down at least for a week and say nothing. And sometimes some of us that's been around this uh, for a couple of days, we know that there are times where there ain't nothing to say. And people who are going through don't want to hear religious cliches. They don't want to. Ain't nobody trying to hear when you in the in the in the steepest part of your trial. Ain't nobody trying to hear, you know, you know, you know, God, 
God knows what he's doing. And he doeth all things well. Nobody keep that to yourself. You save that for you. That when tragedy hits your family, you make sure that you call up everything you done said that didn't make no sense when somebody else was going through it. Sometimes the greatest gift that God gives a saint is to learn in certain spaces to be quiet. Let, let, let your presence say what you cannot articulate. got faith. Lord knows you got faith and in, some, and in some strange way, James knows it. And we are coming to know it. In some strange way, God knows that that faith has to be increased. It has to be strengthened. It, 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 if you're going to endure where he has you going, then something has to happen where you are to strengthen and hold you when he sends you on your journey. And there are those who get mad at, at this, what I call this holding pattern, where, where you're ready to graduate, and you think you're ready to graduate, yeah, based upon the wind being at your back and uh, smooth sailing in front of you, and you think you're ready to graduate, but God, God knows our heart, and he knows what we are not able to handle. And there are certain things that are created where we stumble into it because it's testing time. Yeah, and, and you can't get out of certain grades until you pass the test. And some people want to accelerate their experiences and make others think that they are spiritually superior when in essence they are not because they haven't passed the test. Anybody that manufactures, and I'm almost through, anybody that manufactures that uh, is a inventor of something or created something, got to try to find out if it works. You don't want to get in no car that's been on the assembly line if it hadn't been tested. You don't want to be the one that's on the airplane and the pilot starts to announce we should have tested this. When we were on the ground, so I take offense at all of these people who get uh, upset about uh, flight delays because they're uh, mechanical issues, because they got to be somewhere. They don't even have enough sense to understand that if you get in the air and, and something wrong with the plane, ain't none of us getting nowhere but the sweet by and by. So I'm not that person that joins in with the chorus of di disenchanted people. Uh, uh, talking about, uh, but I, I, I got to be in New York. Well, well walk. <laughs> that, the, that, the, that the builder of the thing has to put it to the test got to be some maneuvering to see how it's going to stand up. Yeah, that uh, some, some, sometimes, sometimes when, you, when you're driving along and, uh, and you know, and, and don't get mad at me, and, and you know that you got a couple of uh, tires that's lost its grip.
and, and, and you're going you to drive from here to Chicago on tires that don't have treads to grip the road. And you brush it off when somebody asks you about it. You brush it off. So, oh, 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 I'm going to make it because the Lord is with me. And you're almost there. And you roll right into a thunderstorm. And now you got to deal with the stress of whether or not my tires are going to stay on this road. When you had a chance to either find an alternative way to get there or, or do a GoFundMe for some tires. That's popular, ain't it? Ain't that popular? I was thinking about doing one myself. So in the same, in the same application, you got to know that when we are experiencing trials and tribulations in life, God's not trying to destroy us. No, God is trying to build us up. He, he, he really wants to move us from this holding pattern to whatever the next stage in life is. But when, but when you graduate, he wants you to give you standard equipment so you can stay there. Not just to get there, but to stay there. And to have your faith to mature while you're in the storm. Not, not out of the storm. Not out of the storm. But, but you are maturing while in it. Any, any, anybody can shout when the sun is shining. I wonder where your praise is when you know ain't nothing going right. When you know every door you pull on is locked. When your back is a part of the wall, not pressed against the wall, but so heavy until you become a part of the drywall. I wonder, I wonder where your praise is then. And I know, I know there's got to be, there got to be a handful of people who understand that the tryings of your faith is producing a perseverance, a maturity, where you can say like Job, though you slay me, yet I'm going to trust you. That all the days of my appointed time, I'm going to wait because I know my change is coming. It ain't mine to call when it comes. It's mine to wait on you and praise you faithfully until it does come. Woo. That old preacher preaching this morning. I'm going to tell you something that you already know. I'm just going to reinforce it because the enemy tries to keep you blind from this fact. But listen, my brother, listen, my sister, God has been good to us. He's been better to us than we know. And the enemy tries to blind that from us. The enemy tries to have us focus on what we're going through rather than the God who's bringing us through. I wonder if you can't go on and almost said whisper, but you don't need to whisper it. Go on and tell the people around you, the Lord is good to me. He is faithful. And all that I have needed, the Lord continues to supply. And he's so much God that if he don't bring me out of it, he'll get in there with me. He walks with me. And he talks with me. And he tells me. I'm his own. Hallelujah. And the joy. Well, I don't. Yeah, 
I, I really care, I really care the stress of, of your trial. I do care, but, but there's a lot of moments where it's beyond what I, in a circle, can do. Yeah, that after, after we have supported, then it's on you and God. You got to have a made up mind that, uh, that, that this test that I'm going through, he going to find a way to provide for me. Come here, Abraham. Bring me. I want, I want your son. Yeah, your only son. I, I want him. And Abraham tried to negotiate, but the negotiation ended up in surrender. And while he was going up Mount Moriah on one end, God had a ram coming up the other. Hallelujah, because God is going to always provide himself a sacrifice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stay your hand, Abraham, because there's a ram that's caught in the thicket, caught by his horns. I'm just trying to tell you that if God had you to stumble into it, he knows how to get you out of it. You just got to be faithful. Do you hear what I say? You just got to be faithful. You got to stay in the race. You can't throw in the towel. The towel is your instrument to help get you out of it. God is trying to, excuse me, learn you something. God is trying to build you up. God is trying to take your life to the next place. And if I were you and I feel the heaviness of the struggle, right now is a pretty good time to lay all that aside, to open up your mouth, throw back your head, and start to praise God. No, no, I mean, I mean really, start to praise God. Yeah, like, 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 like this is your last opportunity. You're not looking to tomorrow, you, you are right now in the presence of God and you wanna open up your mouth and you wanna thank God for everything that God has done and continues to do. Ooh. Hallelujah. Yeah. I may not be able to control the test, but I control how I respond to it. And God, I love you. God, I thank you. God, I honor you. God, I worship you. Then nobody like you. I thank you for my children. Thank you for my grandchildren. Thank you for some place to lay my head. Thank you for food on the table. Thank you for being God all by yourself. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. in here. I feel all right. I feel like I'm counting the joy. I'm counting it all joy. You know, some people look at you. Some people look at you and they, and uh, they don't even know you. They just know they don't like you. Because you, 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 you really model the image of prosperity. Many times without a dime in your pocket because prosperity is much more than cash and coins. It's a mindset. It's, it's, it's attitudinal. It's knowing that whatever has happened and will happen, that God is still on your side. Yeah, though, yeah, though I walk through the valley, in the shadow of death, I, I ain't thinking about none of that because the Lord is with me. The Lord is with me because he's my shepherd. He making me to lie down in green pastures. He restores my soul. He, 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 he anointeth my head with oil. But that don't cause you to throw your shoulders back and find your confidence. Hallelujah. Even though you're going through, it'll, it'll, it'll give you a different disposition. 
bless his high name, and some people see you doing that, and they start to hate on you, and they don't even know that that's your public persona. They don't even know that when you get by yourself, the tears you share, yeah, the, the, the critical conversations that you have with God, they don't know nothing about that. And they keep, and they keep asking God to bless them uh, like you've blessed the person that I admire, that my admiration turns into some form of dislike and envy and jealousy. And, and I want to tell you before I go to my seat that uh, you, you, you better quit trying to be the other person. You better be glad you're who you are because you got enough to carry with the life assignments that God has given you. And if you just carry that and quit looking across the room, hallelujah, trying to determine what a blessing looks like because sometimes people can call it a blessing and it's really a curse. And there are other times it can look like a curse, but it's really a blessing. But if you can stumble and fall into the hands of God, I don't care what it looks like. I got a feeling that everything going to be all right. Listen, can you turn to some man and just tell him, listen, I got that same feeling that, that I got a feeling that everything going to be all right. Yeah, and then I turned it over to Jesus. Yeah, and, and he's proven to me over and over again that he can work it out. Is it anybody here to know that the Lord can work it out? I, I, listen, I'm trying to get on out your way now. I, I really am. I really am trying to get on out your way. But you need to elbow somebody and just tell them I tried him for myself. Yeah. And I'm here to testify that the Lord can. Yeah. He can. Oh, he can work it out. Yeah, that, that was down in me, that was. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And I want you to know that can't nobody. Woo. Pick me up like Jesus. Can't nobody. Turn me around like Jesus. Can't nobody give me a second chance like Jesus. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You ought to find you somebody and tell them I'm getting ready to say so right now when I open up my mouth throw back my head and tell the Lord thank you thank you thank you thank you for everything thank you you are God all by yourself thank you I thank you for my family I thank you for my friends I'm grateful for food but I'm most grateful for salvation because you died didn't he die didn't he die yes he hung his head and died they took him down from the cross, put him in a bar or two, but early. early. The third day morning, he got up with all power. I'm gone. I'm gone, but I, I heard Andre Crouch say that I've had many tears and sorrow. I had questions for tomorrow. There's been times I didn't know right from wrong. 
But in every situation, God gave me blessed consolation that my trials come to make me strong. I've, I've been a lot of places. I've seen a lot of faces. There's been times I felt so all alone. But in my lonely hour, those precious lonely hours, Jesus let me know that I was his own. So I thank God for all the mountains. And I thank him for the valleys. I thank him for the storms that he brought me through. If I never had a problem, I wouldn't know God could solve it. I never knew what faith in my God could do. I gotta go, I gotta go. But, but I just want you to know that through it all, yeah, through it all, that I've learned to trust in Jesus. And I've learned to trust in God. Through it all. Yeah, I've learned. I said I've learned. I've learned. I said I've learned to depend upon his word. I gotta ask you a personal question before I take my seat. Do you know him? Have you tried him? Ain't he all right? I wonder if you're not too mean and you're not ashamed. Can you give somebody a fist bump and just tell him I tried him for myself and he is able. So hang on in there, don't throw in the towel, because I got a feeling that everything gonna be all right. Shout yeah, shout yeah, shout yeah, shout out. I said, I got a feeling you ought to help me spread that around the house. Yeah, that I got a feeling I don't care what's going on, but I got a feeling that everything, and I do mean everything, gonna be all right.
praising God, you can still accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you're in the room right now, and you know you've never accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, this is the day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for that word. We're talking to you today. You never accepted Jesus. I'm Minister Terrence Clark, and it is a privilege to extend this invitation to receive Jesus Christ into your heart today. Romans 10 and 9 says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Receive Jesus on today. Also, if you're looking for a place where you can be spiritually nurtured in your faith, we invite you to call us. The information is on the screen and we'll be happy to receive you into our church family. Once again, receive Jesus on today and be blessed. Shalom. It's offering time, Shalom. You may call the office at 314-653-2300. Drop off or mail your check to the church at 5491 North Highway 67, Florissant, Missouri, 63034 through Realm via the church website at www.shalomccop.org or you may text SCCOP to 732. Good morning, Shalom. Shalom Church has a history of encouraging education through discipline structured learning because we believe that this ensures a pathway to successful living. As a way to continue our mission, we will partner with four educational facilities, selecting a family from each to provide support and promote love, faith, hope, and peace. Families will come from Monroe Elementary, Hazelwood Central Middle, Confluence Academy, and students of Shalom Church. Be on the lookout for more information in the weeks to come. On Sunday, July 24th, we will be offering all doses of the COVID vaccine from 12 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. Protect yourself and your loved ones by getting your vaccination or your booster. Join us for some St. Louis summer fun when we attend the Cardinals game on Thursday, August 4th. Tickets are $15 and can be purchased through either the Reflections Ministry or the Church Administrative Office. Grab those bats and dust off those gloves. Shalom will be hosting a softball challenge in which we will invite local churches to participate in a meeting on Thursday, July 21st, 6.30 p.m. at the Lindbergh campus. Book Club meets every third Monday at 6 p.m. at the Lindbergh campus. This month's selection is Black Cake by Charmaine Wilkerson. Join us for our weekly Wisdom Wednesday services at 7 p.m. via live stream. Stay connected with us by following us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or subscribing to our YouTube channel. Let's remember Shalom family. Even during these unprecedented times, we are still committed to Christ's work through preaching, teaching, and praying. Those are your announcements. Stay safe. Remember to mask up. 
and have a blessed week.